Geekom's Max series returns with the A7. Wait a minute, Rob. Didn't you already review the A8 Max? Well remembered, young Padawan. We are indeed going backwards. Or are we? Eh. AMD refreshing year after year with similar mobile chips means this is pretty much a sidestep. Geekom's A7 Max comes with AMD's Ryzen 7940HS, which is an 8-core, 16-thread chip with Radeon 780M graphics. Yeah, I know, I've been saying that a lot for the last couple of years, and you'll be hearing it for a while yet. The A7 Max is unchanged in the design and build quality department. Same chunky metal case and feature set. Accessories are also unchanged. Visa mount, screws, HDMI and power cable, as well as a compact 19 volt 120 watt power supply. What has changed is the configuration. The A7 Max is the first mini PC to feel the DRAM crunch, or first casualty, however you look at it. This mini PC with a high end Ryzen chip launches with just 16 gigabytes of DDR5, and we haven't seen that before. But them's the times we live in. Brands are forced to either raise prices or slash RAM capacity by half, or both as DRAM prices have more than doubled. Oh, I made myself sad. A 1TB SSD is also included, and as of this review, the lowest price can be found on Amazon.com, which is $699. US dollars. The front of the mini PC has four USB-A 10 gigabit ports, a 3.5mm audio jack, and power button. On the side is an SD card reader while inside the Mini is a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E for wireless and Bluetooth. On the back you'll find the barrel jack power input, dual USB 4 40 gigabit, with only the left one supporting power and display. To finish it off, we have dual Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN, dual HDMI 2.0, USB A 10 gigabit, and USB 2. Opening it up is the same as the other Max Minis, which is to say, not fun. Glued on rubber feet to pluck out first, my favourite, then four screws. Next, we need to force the lid out somehow. I use a screwdriver in the foothole. Finally, we have the metal plate with wireless cables that have no slack. So you need to loosen those before removing the screws on the plate. Otherwise, you'll force the wireless cables off the M.2 card like I did, which is more work to reassemble. Inside is a single 2280 Gen 4 M.2 slot and a single 16GB crucial DDR5 5600 RAM stick, which means it'll be running in single channel mode and will hit performance, especially on the iGPU side, but not only limited to the integrated graphics, depending on the workload. Windows 11 Pro is included, like with almost every mini PC we look at, and thankfully, a malware scan shows none included. Ubuntu also works fine if you don't want to use Windows, and yep, that includes wireless and Bluetooth. Since this Mini is short one RAM stick, the two performance tests will consist of the default out-of-box experience and the performance mode set in the BIOS together with an extra stick of RAM for 32GB of dual channel memory. That will give us a good picture of where it sits against the competition and what difference two RAM sticks actually make. Cinebench single core is as expected for a 7940HS. Faster RAM and performance mode makes no difference in the workload. Out of the box, multi-core performance is around 7840HS level, while enabling performance mode pushes the score up 5% to around the out of box UM790 Pro. Geekbench is a CPU benchmark that benefits from more memory bandwidth. So there's a small uptick in the single core score that's not due to the performance mode, which brings it in line with the UM790. Geekbench Multicore sees a low number with the out of the box experience, and with a mix of extra RAM stick plus higher power mode, it almost hits the UM790 Pro level. Another CPU workload that benefits from memory bandwidth is video encoding. The A7 Max does poorly out of the box. We get large gains after adding more RAM and enabling performance mode, though most of it is because of the RAM. Again, still behind the UM790 Pro, but only by a little bit. Unsurprisingly, we see the same happen in the much longer AV1 encoding test. It's the difference between showing up at the middle and upper mid of the chart. Single channel memory hits the AV1 hardware encode straight in the NADs, with it tumbling right down the chart. After the upgrade tweaks, we have something closer 
to the UM790 Pro. AI CPU performance is up next, and for this test, the best result is taken. So that's with the dual channel RAM and performance mode enabled, and the A7 Max performs pretty well. AI GPU performance is good too, but that's because we're not testing with the default configuration. 3D graphics performance is poor out of the box, only matching a Ryzen 7545U, which is a low-powered mid-range chip from the same generation. Geekom's A7 Max is hampered by the lack of memory bandwidth. Add a second stick, and the score shoots up by 73.5% to where it should be. We see very similar results in every GPU test. Now that we know about the large difference in graphics performance from the 3D Mark numbers, let's check it out with a side-by-side -side comparison using a couple of games. The FPS hit depends on how much memory bandwidth is required on a game-by-game -game basis, but clearly two sticks of RAM makes a big difference. And to mix it up, here's the PS3 emulator. We always check if an eGPU works if there's a possibility, and the A7 Max worked fine with a USB 4 port. Code compilation is down the chart, and even with the extra boost, the A7 Max only matched the Ryzen H255. So that's not too impressive. If you've ever heard that Adobe Photoshop and Premiere greatly benefit from fast RAM, then here's a good example showing just that. AMD's Ryzen 79 40HS gets a lower score than the i7 13620H when tested out of the box. So let's improve it. And again, the majority of this boost comes from the dual channel RAM and not from raising the power limit. Adobe Premiere has a dismal result out of the box lower than the i7-13620H. And you can see the improvement here is massive, putting the Max as one of the top performers. Moving on to the SSD benchmark. The included Wadposit drive is above average. Geekom's A7 Max has cooling for the SSD as we saw when opening it, and it looks to do the job with the drive temp staying low. Bluetooth range at over 5 meters or 17 feet is a bit above average, and there were no wireless problems at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. An idle power draw of 9 watts is great, and lower than the UM790 Pro. The maximum is around the usual 100 watts from the wall, and depends on the power mode. The 7940HS maxed out at the same temp of 90C with both modes, which is the limit before throttling kicks in. Load fan noise is above average out of the box, so it's nothing great, but it shoots up to really loud when performance mode is used, and far too high for my ears. The A7 Max is pretty close to what we're seeing from many mini PCs these days in volume. The delete key enters the BIOS. Most options are included on the main page, such as the power mode, AC loss control, and wake on LAN. There isn't really anything else, just the essentials. Time for the mini PC checklist. Alright, so we've got a metal case and the build quality is fine. Pricing is high against the competition, and there's no bare bones option available. Geekom includes a compact power supply and VESA mount, which is nice. There's no Oculink if you need it, but it does have USB 4 and dual LAN, along with a full-sized SD card reader, which is rare. Between the glued-on rubber feet, lid that's not easy to remove, and the wireless cables with no slack, this one's annoying to open. RAM price hikes have resulted in the A7 Max coming in with just one RAM stick, which effectively cuts the bandwidth in half, affecting both CPU and GPU performance. Only one M.2 slot is a shame but the SSD and RAM held up temperature-wise during all the tests. Although, with no active cooling, it's possible the RAM could thermal throttle with extended use. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi work fine, and load fan noise is higher than average. Geekom has a dedicated support page for the A7 Max with drivers and BIOS, which is great, and the warranty is 3 years, 
better than most that offer a single year. That's the Geekom A7 Max. Overall, a decent mini PC with some drawbacks, like the single RAM stick, which we'll likely see more of this year. Only one M.2 slot is going to be a deal breaker for those wanting additional storage, but the longer warranty and support page is good to see. Ultimately, the asking price is high compared to the competition for what you get, even with those benefits. But if you're interested, find it linked in the video description and support the in-depth reviews by using the affiliate links. Oh, and in 2025, Geekom released a mini PC with the AMD Ryzen 8745HS, a true bang for buck CPU, and you can find that review right here. Cheers.